Did you know that shortly after George Washington's death, his doctors actually tried to revive him by filling him full of lamb's blood? George Washington had a lifelong fear of being buried alive, when what he should really have been worried about was his doctors trying to replace his blood with sheep juice. In December 1799, after riding outside in the cold on a horse, George Washington developed a case of the sniffles. And while that's not normally a death sentence, Washington had a team of doctors who appeared to be in the pay of Big Death. As was the style at the time, his doctors took one look at his breathing difficulties and sore throat and immediately went, Remove this man's blood immediately! You see, bloodletting was still a thing, and these doctors were incredibly into it. Over the course of 12 hours, they removed 80 ounces of his blood, and that's like 40% of his total blood volume, or one of those big bottles of coke. Now, I don't want to get too technical here, but basically you need blood to live, and without it, George Washington weakened quickly, while his doctors stood around discussing the best ways to make him vomit up his humours, or gave him a drink made of butter and vinegar, which nearly made him choke to death. So things didn't look like they could get much worse for Washington, and then they did! One of his doctors had the actually progressive idea that putting blood into a dying person was better than bleeding it all out of them until the breathing stopped. Unfortunately, the knowledge around blood transfusions was… not great. Now you're probably aware that if you inject the wrong blood type into somebody, with some exceptions, it can cause a lot of problems. Your immune system will recognise it as a foreign body, attack it, and that can quickly end up with one dead you. The adverse reaction is made so much worse, however, if, for example, you drained the blood of a horse and piped that into a human. And in the earliest experiments, that's essentially what they were doing. In 1667, a French physicist gave a young boy who'd had too much blood removed a small transfusion of sheep's blood. Miraculously, he survived! The doctor wasn't quite done pushing his luck, and he decided to use the same method on a second patient who already had enough blood. More blood, sir? No, I couldn't possibly. He also gave the blood of a cow to a mentally unwell man, believing that good blood will cure him. Like putting diesel in a petrol engine, all this actually ended up doing was killing him. <laughs> Hundreds of years later, medicine hadn't improved much, and Washington's doctors were just about to suggest reviving him by using lamb's blood. <laughs> by the time Dr Thornton arrived, Washington was already in rigor mortis, but that didn't stop him from asking his friends and relatives if it would be okay to pump lamb's blood into his veins, and then warm him up with blankets. After this was done, he would perform a tracheotomy on the corpse, blow air into his lungs, and thus reanimate the president. <sighs> Having feared being buried alive his entire life, at the end he came very close to waking up to see his doctor trying to fill his corpse with animal blood, which is so much worse. Thankfully, the family told the doctor to leave the president alone and we never got to experience a zombie president until, well, you can insert a president of your choice here.